What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Pepper Jobs Extend Touch 1080p IPS 15.6 inch portable monitor. In the past, I've done a couple other portable monitor reviews, but this one really takes the cake. It has some awesome features built in that I'm definitely gonna be showing off in this video, like full touch capabilities with 10 points of touch and a built-in 10,000 milliamp hour battery with Qualcomm Quick Charge. Now this battery will power the screen itself for up to six hours at 60% brightness, but it'll also charge or power your devices through USB Type-C. And this monitor is compatible with any device that has HDMI out or HDMI through USB Type-C. But the touch functionality will be a different story. It's not gonna work on a PS4 or an Xbox One, but it is fully compatible with Windows 10, Mac OS, Android, Linux, and Chrome OS. So the price on this is set at around $260 to $270. It's much cheaper than the ASUS touchscreen that they just released a few months ago. And that's what they're really competing with. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to receive the display itself. Now, like I mentioned, this is 1080p. It's an IPS display, 15.6 inch. It does have micro HDMI and USB Type-C for video in. We'll dig a little deeper here and see what else we get. I believe this is going to be the folio case. This will allow us to protect the screen when we're traveling, and it also acts as a stand. There's several different positions you can put this in, and it magnetically attaches to the back of the screen. And for the rest of the included items, I'll go ahead and get them out of the box and see what we have here. They also include a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, mini HDMI to full-size HDMI, micro USB to full-size USB for OTG. This will plug right into the side of the monitor over here, and you can add a USB drive. We also get a stylus and the power adapter with US and European connectors. So overall, the build quality looks really nice. It's anodized black aluminum all the way around from the back to the front here. We do have a little bit of a plastic bezel, but overall it looks like they knew what they were doing when they built this thing. Since this does have a 10,000 milliamp hour battery built in, we can turn it on right now. I'm not exactly sure how charged it's going to be. We have a single button on the front, which acts as our power button. You'll just hold it for about three seconds. On the right hand side, we have our USB Type-C for power in, volume control, and brightness control. Now the brightness control actually acts as the OSD, so if you hold it for three seconds, you'll get the on-screen menu, so you can adjust everything from contrast to HDR. And I know they're a bit hard to see over here, but there are two speakers on each side. So we have a total of four one watt speakers on this monitor, and it sounds absolutely amazing. On the left hand side, we have another USB Type-C. Now this is gonna be our video in and charger port out micro HDMI, and our micro USB for that OTG adapter. So what we have here is a 15.6 inch IPS display at 1080p. It does do 60 hertz, 16.2 million colors, a built-in 10,800 milliamp hour battery, four 8 ohm 1 watt speakers, 10 points of touch, HDR, USB Type-C, and mini HDMI for video input. The whole thing weighs 950 grams, and it's only 8.8 .8 millimeters thin. So now I want to see how this thing performs. First up, I'm going to be connecting my Galaxy S10, and we'll just see if we can mirror the screen from here. So from here, I'm just using the included USB Type-C cable. We're going to plug this right in. It does give us a battery percentage on the monitor itself. It also started charging the phone, and we're now mirroring the display. So the touch screen on the phone is always going to work, but how is the touch screen built into the monitor? Seems to work really well, as you can see here. You can navigate the full Android operating system from the monitor's touch screen. And all the sound is coming from the speakers on the monitor. And the picture looks really good here. Now this will work with DeX, I just don't have it turned on yet. And if we hold the upper brightness button over here on the side for three seconds, it'll bring up the OSD so we can go through the settings on the monitor itself. We can change the color profile, contrast, you can turn HDR on or off, and you can also rotate the screen. It's actually really cool having this bigger touchscreen hooked up to the phone, and it works really well here. So I essentially turned this Galaxy S10 into a Galaxy 15.6. I can go through all of my apps, and if I want a game here, I can start them directly on the screen itself. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my controller and we'll get into a little bit of gameplay. I'm using my Xbox One S controller connected over Bluetooth directly to the phone itself and we should be getting 1080p 60fps on the monitor. So 
so far so good. It's really smooth. We're definitely getting that 60 FPS in Fortnite. As long as your phone can support it and has HDMI out, it'll work on this screen. So what about single board computers? Well, initially I wanted to hook up my Raspberry Pi 4, but unfortunately I don't have a micro HDMI to full size HDMI or micro HDMI to mini HDMI adapter. But theoretically we should be able to power the Raspberry Pi 4 from the monitor's internal battery and display the image on screen. But I just don't have the adapters available, so here's the Odroid N2 running the latest version of Android 10. I'm just using a USB Type-C cable plugged into one of the USB ports on the N2, and I also have HDMI coming from it. But this is being powered from the wall because the N2 doesn't support USB Type-C power in. And it looks like touch is working perfectly on the N2. I'm going to go ahead and get into a game real quick. And I actually opted to just test out Minecraft instead of Asphalt 9 because I had to update that. But as you can see here, the touch screen is working inside of games, and I just basically turn my Odroid N2 into a big old tablet. I definitely wouldn't want to play like this all the time, but it's cool to know that touch is working with these single board computers. And it should also work with the Raspberry Pi 4 as long as you're running a Linux variant that supports touch, like Raspbian. As for Windows 10, this is going to work directly out of the box. I have my low-end laptop connected here. You can use it as a second monitor or you could extend the displays, but touch functionality is present here and it works really well with Windows 10. Now they also included a stylus. It's a basic stylus. It's nothing like the Apple Pen or the S Pen that comes with the Note 10 or the Galaxy S6. Just open up paint here and I can draw a little face. That's about all I can draw here but it does work. It's something that I personally won't use much, but I know there's some people out there that could get some use out of the stylus. So this monitor is definitely something I'll be using when I'm traveling. I can extend my display on my laptop, just give me more surface area to work with. And with the laptop I have here, the portable monitor actually looks a lot better than the built-in screen. If you're looking for a portable monitor strictly for console gaming, I really wouldn't recommend this because it does have touch built in and touch is not going to be functional with the Xbox One or the PS4 or even the Switch. But if you do end up picking one of these up mainly for a different reason, just note that it will work with the PS4, Switch, or the Xbox One. This is the Xbox One hooked up through HDMI and I'm running Forza Horizon 4. Works really well, 1080p, 60Hz. Now for me, one of the main uses I'm going to get out of this monitor is Samsung DeX. I have my Galaxy S10 hooked up with a different cable. This was a cable I already had for my other portable monitor. And it works fine on here, even the touch. Now while Samsung DeX really isn't designed for touch, it will work. I'd rather have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse hooked up. But either way, this is going to be my go-to monitor for Samsung DeX because we have that 10,000 milliamp hour battery built in. It's going to power the screen and charge my phone at the exact same time. I've actually been using Samsung DeX a lot lately for light work, entertainment, and emulation. So overall, the Pepper Jobs Extend Touch 15.6 inch portable monitor is pretty awesome. It is a bit pricey at $260 to $270, but if you look into these type of monitors without built-in batteries, you'll find that it's very competitively priced. It's actually $100 less than ASUS's Zen Touch that was recently released, and I think that's exactly what it's trying to fight against here. If you've been in the market for a touchscreen portable monitor, I definitely recommend checking this one out, especially with that built-in battery. That's something that I really haven't seen much from these portable monitors, but I'm sure it'll be in more down the road. If you want to learn more about this monitor, I will leave links to the official website in the description. This is also available on Amazon, so those will be down there also. And if you have any questions or you want to see anything else tested on this monitor, just let me know in the comments below. I recently created another video on a different portable monitor that didn't include an internal battery or touchscreen. And if you're not looking for touch or internal battery, I would recommend that one. It's the Li Pao with a starting price around 160 But if you definitely need touch and a battery built in, I highly recommend the Extend Touch. I really appreciate you guys watching. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.